Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Grow Wealthy Grooming. We're going to talk about why 50% is bad for your business. Give me one second. Hi, guys. It's great to see you. As usual, I am River Lee. I want to welcome you guys to this week's episode of Grow Wealthy Grooming. Um, Don't mind me. I am just fiddling with our technology. Like I said before, this technology is new. It's really wonderful and really robust, and it's going to allow us to do um, what I want to do with you guys today, working with a live Excel. So I'm really excited for you guys to be here. Hi, Teresa Hewitt. It's great to see you. And Peter, wonderful to see everybody. Welcome, everybody. So again, I apologize for the delay. Um, I'm really excited, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. So as you guys know, too many groomers own a job and not a business. And at Savvy Groomer, we teach pet professionals how to make simple changes in their business to grow a business that is successful. At Savvy Groomer, we know you want to be the savvy pet professional with a business you can be proud of. In order to do that, you need to know how to manage your business so you can own a business and not a job. The problem is you hear lots of advice that doesn't actually make a difference, which makes you feel frustrated, overwhelmed, and like a failure. You've been putting in the effort, but you don't have anything to show for it. We believe no one should have their dream fail. I understand. I had to learn a lot of my business knowledge the hard way and from outside the grooming industry. You know, I currently use my expertise to work with clients internationally and have a proven track record. So let's go ahead and begin. Oh, we have lots of people. Good morning. Well, good afternoon. Well, good morning, Australia. Good afternoon. Those that are local, thank you so much for being here. And thank you so much for being patient with all of this technology. I'm actually going to turn on this other light because I'm really dark at the moment. There we go. Now you can see my face. So I'm really excited for today's show. We're going to just do some basic, basic, basic math. Um, So what I want to start with you guys is uh, how many of you guys currently own businesses or have employees? How many of you guys are going to be owning a business in the near future? Tell me a little bit more about you guys. I'm just going to my drink. Mm-hmm. So for those of you guys that don't know, I, ha- I owned a grooming salon. I opened up my grooming salon four days before my son was born. We were in financial straits and I opened up a grooming salon the completely wrong way. But what I learned is by growing that business, I had five employees. I really loved it. We had a membership model. I owned a green holistic grooming salon. I grew that to the point where I was really happy. And then I ended up selling it. And I ended up selling it because I knew that that business model didn't fit my personal lifestyle at the time. My son was very young and I wanted to be home for him at the end of the day. And I wanted to have weekends off. So for me, what happened is I ended up going mobile And I wanted to go upscale mobile, but the truth was for me personally, I really don't like scissoring and I'm a really mediocre dog groomer. I wish I was a better person, but I'm not. Like I'm perfectly okay being a mediocre dog groomer. But what I found is I actually became a certified feline master groomer and all I do is groom cats now. So I was able to find a niche that I really loved and I currently charge between $100 and $165 per cat Each cat has to be on a four week set schedule and most of them are bath and blow dries, which I really enjoy. So now, so it seems like Teresa has, has had in May three employees and now she has, now I have me. I don't know if you mean one or just you, but what I want to talk about a little bit today is I'm going to go, I'm going to keep the chat box up so I can see you guys. So feel free to put any notes in that you guys want to talk about. I'm going to move around my screen that way hopefully we can see the Excel sheet and I'm hoping you guys are going to be able to see it. We should be able to. So go ahead and let me know if you guys can see that. So what we're going to do very simply is break down the amount of profit you're going to earn per pet. Now these are all going to be rough numbers. These are all going to be vague numbers. I want you guys to start looking at things and again these are very general. These are not hard numbers. By hard numbers, I mean these are not your numbers. These are very round numbers. We're going to do nice, easy, round numbers. Because the truth is that doing that extra steps is just not what we're going to be able to do live. So again, I'm going to pull up the chat so I can see you guys. So Teresa is just me. I don't blame you. I have a love-hate with employees. 
I would really love to build a culture, but building a culture and having employees is very difficult. So I want to start with, I did a couple of different numbers. And if you guys want to see different numbers, let me know. If you want to see a different price per pet, I left spaces available that we can definitely do that. So this is an Excel spreadsheet and it already has the math done for us. So right now, this person is charging $35 per pet. And I know we're like, that's really low. But I'm sure that is some of you guys' pug baths, some of your lab baths are $35. And these are all percentages. But I want you to think about, okay, so overhead. And let's start defining our term. Guys, overhead is the bills the business needs to pay. So this is your rent. This is your, I mean, most of the time, this is also going to be your shampoos, anything that you're purchasing for the business. Um, other common things are reoccurring bills. This can be scheduling software. As you guys know, I am a huge fan of 123PET. Um, and I also have a code. If you guys ever want to sign up, please use my code. That helps me support this channel and continue doing what I'm doing. But with that, you know, anything that you're going to be paying towards the business, I would consider overhead. And we can get much more nuanced with this. But for a simple live demonstration, let's just stick to talking about basic overhead. And then next, I want to talk about taxes. So depending upon where you are, now these taxes, what I'm talking about are just you paying the government off of your bills. And so for the most part in the US, you're going to be paying anywhere between 10% and 25% in taxes. Um, you know, I'm a DBA in New England, I pay about 20 to 25% of my gross income into taxes. In some place, some of you guys have lower, and this is going to be between state and federal. Knowing your percentage is helpful. Um, I generally tell my, you know, personal finance on a leash students and my business coaching students, I tell them to put 25% away because I would rather give myself a tax refund at the end of the year versus having to owe a large amount. Now, I didn't say that I overpaid my taxes to the government. You know, I personally hate trying to convince the government to give my money back. So I definitely have them quarterly. They give me an estimate and I estimate on the low end because I have that fully fund amount of money in a separate savings account with that 25% that I immediately put into the tax bracket. Now, when I put payroll cost here, again, you can see payroll cost versus wages. What I wanted to explain in very quickly is now, again, this is gonna depend upon where you live. Now for payroll, you have the payroll company, you're gonna have workers comp, and you're also gonna have your state and local taxes. So where I'm at, it, it's a minimum of 10 to 15% between paying for the payroll company, workers comp, and the actual taxes I have to pay as an employer. Um, I've seen people as high as 20 to 25%. Um, I know California is an example of a state that you can pay a large percentage. Now, obviously, and this all depends upon how much your business is making, what you're writing off, and all these things. And again, that's why I hate getting into really specific numbers, because the best person to tell you what your percentage is going to be is either your enrolled agent or your certified public accountant, so your CPA or EA. Um, and everyone should ideally have someone who's going to be doing at least their taxes. I personally really prefer people, you know, outsource your payroll, outsource your bookkeeping, outsource your taxes. You should know the basics of it so you can double check and make sure everything looks well. But trying to do the numbers for your payroll, trying to do the numbers for your bookkeeping, it's just a lot of effort for not paying someone a lot of money. And especially because I use 123PET, it's really easy for me to pull that no those numbers out and I actually get them on a spreadsheet. And that spreadsheet is easy to put into QuickBooks and then that's all in one so I don't have to worry about it. And then my bookkeeper basically double checks everything and puts everything in the right category. That way it's easy to check for tax time. So that's what I mean by payroll cost. And again, it's generally a minimum of 7%. I've never seen it, um, you know, and again, I don't know about you other countries. For the most part, I've never seen it less than 7% that you're going to be paying in employment taxes. And again, I know this is technically not correct because again, we really should be taking this 10% of the actual wages and not of the gross profit of the pet. But let's just make everything simple. 
This is not a calculator to figure out exactly how much profit you're going to be making. This is again, a basic baseline to get a vague idea of what we're going to get. Um, and if you guys do want a real breakdown and all of that, that would, I would really suggest that is part of my business coaching. And that is way more intense because we actually look at your projected numbers and things like that. But that, again, that takes a lot of time. So going back to this. So like I said, we have the here. Now wages. Again, I have this in a percentage. Um, I know we always talk about 50% gross profit. And by the way, guys, gross profit is money that, so this is gross profit. What gross profit is, is the money someone hands you. Net profit in this instance would be the money over here, where after you've taken out all of the overhead, the taxes, the payroll costs, the wages, the owner draws, how much money is left. So this is gross profit over here, how much someone pays you, and net profit is how much you've made after everything. So wages, I'm looking at, if this is 50% of gross profit, then we would know how much this person is being paid. Um, if you want really quick, I will look at how much this person would be paid really quickly. Um, this is, might be this, let me play with this for a second. Nope, wrong way, see? That's why I do things live a little bit. You know what, how about this? Let me look, you can all look at my face while I fumble around trying to remember all of these uh, silly Excel. Pretty sure it's point this. So, I know. I know there's a way of doing it in Excel. It's always a pain. I think if I make this a 50%, and then let's try this. I don't know why I just did that. Okay, there we go. There we go. <laughs> let's see if that works. Nope. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Got it. Boop, boop, boop. All right. Sorry about that, guys. I always, whoop. Uh, Turquoise Laura, let me know if you're hitting a lot of buffering. I'm hoping you guys are not. I'm really sorry to hear that if you guys are. Um, you know, like I said, as this technology continues to grow, I am trying to make it work for you guys. So here we go. So like I said, so let's say this is somebody paying 50% gross profit. So 50% of $35 would be $18. And we're actually gonna give it two zero. So it would technically be $17.50. Oh good, I'm so glad Turquoise Laura that she just said that she refreshed and all's good now. So right here we can see that this person making 30, the pet making $35, this person would be making $17.50. Um, so, and see like this is, I gotta fix this for a second. Ugh, what a pain in the butt. We're just gonna ignore that for now because I want my numbers here. I'll play with it later. I might even make you guys a more formatted one. That way we can just play with this more, but I just wanted to do something quick. All right, so like I said, this person is paying out 50% of gross profit. They're not taking any owner draw, which is insane. As you guys know, I'm a big proponent of, basically, let me put it this way. I. If you own a business, you need to be making money from the business, whether or not you work in it. You know, otherwise you are better off just putting your money in a cookie jar and just putting it away. Like there's just no point. You could be making more with a CD. If you're not taking an owner draw, you could be making more, putting the money you invested in your business into a CD. So here after adding in all of these percentages, they've allocated 90% of their profit 
um, 90% of the gross profit to all of these things. And then what's left is only 10%. And so their profit on this $35 dog would be 350. So I'm gonna just copy and paste this all the way down. And what I would love to hear is if you guys want to start playing with these numbers, um, you know, what numbers would you like to see? And again, everywhere is different. And as you can see, as these numbers go up, because it's only 10%. So if this person only charged $35 per pet, they're gonna be making a profit in this example of 350. And then if you'd say that dog is an extra $15, they've only made an extra $1.50. And that's kind of insane when you guys think about it. You could be charging $15 more per pet and making that. But what I'd like you to see is now if I drop this down to 40, they've doubled how much they made. Now watch that again. By having 20% left versus 10, they've made an additional $10 in profit. I'm sorry, $5 in profit. So they've doubled their profit. And the same thing here. See here, guys? So they went from 50% making $10 to $20 here. And it makes a lot of sense because you're making an extra 10%. Um, and even then, 20% left is really not a lot. Especially because this tax rate here, you know, like I said, my tax rate is around 25%. So I generally groom cats at around $100 a cat is my base pay. So let's say, you know, now this overhead is pretty low percentage because this is assuming and that I'm only paying 15% of $100, which is $15. So I'm pretty sure per pet, depending upon how many pets I'm doing, I'm probably paying more than 50% in overhead, especially you guys have debt. Um, I'm a mobile groomer. My grooming van is a lot of money. So, you know, my mobile van payment, I say it's 1,500, but it's less than that, but I put $1,500 a month on my van. And so, you know, that's just my van payment. So keeping it under 15% overhead is really good. And I'm assuming if you have debt, it's probably more than that. And again, like I said, 15% in taxes. I actually put 25% taxes away. Now, if I put 25% here, and let's say I was paying 50% in that wage. Now I have no profit left. I have literally made no money. Now, right here in this example, I don't have any money. And that's at 15% overhead. So I'm assuming that this overhead, I'm not having any debt. I don't have a lot of money, you know. And then here, this is high tax bracket. This is very common if you are in California or if you are in a New England state like I am. The payroll cost, let's even put that down to 7%, assuming that I'm just paying their taxes because they have to be a legal W-2 employee. Now, out of $100, I'm only earning Three dollars. That is my net profit. Now, let's say if you're ever read the book Profit First, what they suggest is you put an owner's profit first. It would be one percent. You know, the first thing you should do is pay yourself for owning a business because, again, you know, if I if I was paying myself in a CD, my CD would literally be like one or two percent. Um, you can get online bank accounts that pay you three percent of your money. So from $100 to $2. And again, let's go back to this $35. You know, we've got the 15% in overhead. Let's look at 25% in taxes. We'll bring this down to 7% of payroll costs. Um, like I said, I've never seen it less than seven. So, you know, that's low. They make $1.50. Oh, and I need my dollar owner draw. My 1% owner draw, rather. That is 70 cents. Now, let's keep the same overhead taxes, low payroll, which I know the payroll cost is low, wages, let's change the wages to 40. Hey, did you guys see that? Let me do that again. So we're gonna go from 50, everyone watching this, so $35 per pet, 15% in overhead, 25 in taxes, $7% 7 in payroll costs, and 1% in owner draw. We're gonna go from 50%, that means that I have 2% left for profit, which is 70 cents. Now, if I take it from 50% to 40, 
Now I've gone from 70 cents to 420. It's a huge jump. Okay, now in a perfect world, what you should be keeping is all payroll wages under 30%. So let's look at these numbers again at 30%. Now at 30% wages, which is ideally what we should have at a service-based industry, your profit is 7.7 versus the $100 having a groomer at 50% is really only making $2. That's crazy. So I went, I would make more money grooming 35, well, not not the groomer, the business owner. And again, I am looking at this completely from a business owner standpoint. I'm not looking at this from an employee standpoint. And we could talk more about employee standpoint. I really believe in hourly for employees to keep payroll around. But let's just look at this from a completely business minded. If I go from $35 and I'm only 30% as a business owner, I'm making way more profit. So that's where you see a lot of places like, you know, I, I know like we have, everyone talks about PetSmart, Petco and how they pay 50%, but that's because they don't care. Pay, you know, when they have those $35 bath specials, they don't have any extra over, they might have, let's call it 5% overhead. Because that 5% overhead is because they're already in, a, they already have the shop. You know, Petco, PetSmart already has the building. So they have a little bit of stuff for their shampoos. They have a little bit of money for it, putting and investing in that. And then, yes, they probably pay a lot in taxes because they're a corporation. Yes, they probably have a lot of payroll costs, probably even more than that. So let's call that even 10. So they're still making 310 because our overhead is at least 15%. And again, we're talking about whether or not we have any debt. And 15% is really before you have debt. Oh, see, that sucks. Yeah. So if you, and this is again, where a lot of times we have to do the math to see if our business is viable. So in this instance, this person is charging $35 per pet. And again, a lot of us are like, oh, that's really, really low. But how many of you guys are doing pugs, chihuahuas, lab baths? Some of you guys are even doing groom dogs at this price. And you're like, oh, 15%. If you do not have any debt, then I would at least like to see this money. You know, if you have no overhead, I would like to see this money set aside towards savings, towards updating, because, you know, believe it or not, like you might have had this dryer for the last 20 years and you think it's never going to kick the bucket. Eventually, you're going to need a new dryer. Eventually, you're going to want to invest in something like a Prima system or another bathing system or a hair vac or clipper vac. You're going to want to invest in things. You're going to need money to invest in that. So if you don't have overhead and you don't have debt, then you're going to need money to grow. And that's where that money would come in. And taxes, taxes are only going to go up. I wish I could tell you they're going to go down, but they're just going to keep going up. So and this is not this is where a lot of people will scrimp. So they will have overhead because they'll have rent and things like that. Um, they won't update and they won't have any savings. So they will do their best to cut taxes. So they will probably either not file taxes um, or they'll hide cash, which is up to you as a business owner. You know, I don't want to personally get caught by the IRS. That's not my shtick. Um, or they'll have illegal independent contractors and skip the payroll cost so they're not paying this because if I take away this, now I'm making all this money. So this is where you'll see a lot of people saying that they have independent contractors and they'll basically tell you that they can't afford it and they're absolutely correct. Because if I keep the same overhead, the same in taxes, the same payroll, I'm sorry, no, there's no, and say there's no payroll cost because they are not legally having that employee, they just have them cash under the table, whatever it is, then that means that they are earning $3.15 per dog versus if I take this up to 10% where they're paying the taxes and they're also paying the workers comp, you can see now, now they're losing money. Okay, and let's take this, I mean, this is the same here. If we look again at, you know, per pet, if I take this up to 50, we're at $5, right guys? And again, watch the payroll go. 
So basically, a lot of people would rather pay their employees illegally and give them an extra 10% and then take that 10% out of paying the employees taxes and things like that. The bad thing about that is they think they're doing their employees a favor by letting them quote unquote keep all of their money and go through the rigmarole of having a business and writing things off. The problem is that when you have an independent contractor and I'm gonna turn my camera back on so I can see you guys. Uh, the problem really becomes with somebody who's an illegal independent contractor because there's almost no chance of having a legal independent contractor in the grooming industry. If you, the people that are, are literally the people that rent a grooming salon within a doggy daycare, rent a uh, grooming salon within a pets, uh, that like a pet store. Like basically if PetSmart or Petco rented out their little unit, that would be its own business. But you have to, again, keep the business separate. So you can't, book, they can't book you clients. They also can't book, you know, share clients. Like you can advertise with them and they can advertise with you, but you need separate books, separate systems. You need to have your own phone number. You need to be running all your credit cards. You pay them a monthly rent. They do not pay you. Like you don't, basically it has to be a landlord situation. So I generally tell people, They'd be like, why aren't I my own business when I'm an independent contractor? And I don't want to go too far off the rabbit hole with this, but this is so important. So you are not an independent contractor if you are not paying a set flat rate to your landlord. And you might be like, that doesn't make any sense because we're not talking about chair rentals and things like that, but even if we are. So legally, if I'm renting a, you guys know the little shopping malls. Let's say I rent one of the units and there's four units. Does my, do, do people call me the grooming salon or do they call my landlord to book an appointment? They call me the grooming salon. Whose name and number is on, in front of that building? It's my name and number, right? It's not my landlord. My landlord doesn't have them call, let's say it's, you know, Fluffy Realty, because why not? You know, they don't call Fluffy Realty to book an appointment with me. And they don't call Fluffy Realty to do anything with me. They don't ever deal with my landlord. They only deal with me. Anytime you want to know if something is a legitimate, you know, independent contractor versus, you know, I don't want to say illegal, like a, you should, whether, basically it boils down if you want to be a W-2 or an independent contractor. Independent contractor is if this was a landlord in a small building, I know, like a, what do they call them, storefronts, plazas, is that the way they're acting? And if you're asking that and you're saying no, then it's not. And that's kind of annoying because obviously you want to do what's best for you and find a job that pays well. Um, but as business owners, we have to protect ourselves and they are coming for us. I mean, you guys saw the Uber and Lyft problems that are happening in California. It's just gonna get more common. And the days of illegal independent contractors is coming to a close. It's going to end. So that said, you know, with the payroll cost, we are going to have to, as business owners, get real about hiring people. The reason you can't give people 50% of gross wages is because you can't afford it. You just can't. It's so bad for your business. Um, let's go back again. So let's look at even the high point. So let's say here, taxes at 25%. Again, that's high, but that's what I tell everyone to do. We're gonna talk about 15% overhead. Again, that's low. That's assuming you have low rent. Um, because again, you know, we're talking low rent, we're talking you don't need, you don't have a large loan or anything like that. 7% payroll cost is literally just what you will pay in taxes for your employee. And again, if you're at 50%, now this right here is on $100. You as a business owner would only keep $2. That is your net profit. You just had a $100 doodle, or for some of you guys that are doing $100 Newfoundlands, you know, so you had the $100 Newfoundland come in, it made it blue hair all over your shop. And that means that you are only getting $2 in profit. Now, really quickly, let's look at it if you were paying your employees 40%. 
Now you've made 12. You have gone from $2 profit to $12 profit. And this is where it matters. And again, so there is, I don't know of any business that is service-based that pays more than 30% of net, I'm sorry, gross profit to payroll. And even then they try to keep it lower, but they say 33, but I'm just going to round to 30 because easy math. Woo. So let's look at it at 30. So remember 40% was $12 profit. At 30%, they're earning $22 profit. That is a huge difference for that business because now this money can either go to paying things like debt. This can go to things like a savings fund. This can go to things like updating. This can go to things like making your employees have paid vacation, healthcare, you know, a, a retirement. So again, this is where the business has to make money. Also, what's really nice about this is instead of paying your employees 50% gross profit, how about giving you a little money? Now, you just lost $2 here, but that $2, you know, that's an extra 4% that you're making to go in your pocket for all the hard work that you do, for all the extra hours that you are working that you're not getting paid for, and this is for all of the time and energy that you spend in your business and you don't actually get a paycheck a lot of times. And I'm not saying you're not getting paid for grooming, but I don't think you guys are paying yourself as a marketer. I don't think you're paying yourself as somebody who is doing all of the reception work. Um, you know, as a mobile groomer, I tell people all the time that they'll tell me like, oh yeah, I only work 40 hours a week. And I'm like, I really doubt that because when I first started my mobile business even, you know, I had scheduled myself 35 hours a week and that included runtime and grooming and all of that. And you know what I found was a little crazy was that, you know, I really thought about, you know, if I'm on, if I'm grooming 30, 35 hours a week, then I'll only spend five or 10 hours a week, you know, doing other things. I thought like, okay, I'll only do uh, another five or 10 hours a week doing receptionist work and bookkeeping and this and that. And most of my stuff is pretty automated. Most of my stuff is, like I said, I use one, two, three pet. I really love it. I can just put that right into QuickBooks. You know, I can, most of that other stuff, like the way I have my employee, not my employees, the way I have my customers like that want to get to know me, the way I have that is all automated. You know, I have them fill out a form and they send it to me. I don't, have long phone conversations until I have that form with prospective clients. So I automate a lot of my business and it still takes a minimum of 10 to 15 hours because that is not, you know, you gotta think about cleaning the van, doing towels, doing marketing, doing outreach to the local community when you're calling veterinarians to check on vaccines, like whatever it is that you're doing, you're gonna be spending more time. So with that, I want you guys to remember that because a lot of times you think that you're not doing a lot, but you really are. And it, there's nothing wrong with that. It's really not. Um, you know, it's good that you're doing a lot with your business. You know, the tough part about that is the fact that you're gonna burn yourselves out. Whoop. Sorry, guys. Oh, someone didn't like it. It's okay. So anyway, guys, I just wanted to point out that the different in percentages, you know, the 50%, how bad it is for your business. And as you can see, very simply, and again, I'm going to put this back up so you guys can see it. All of the different, again, if we bring this from six, now again, taxes is at 15, payroll, 50, if I bring this to 30, I like 1%. That's actually really nice. So if they only had 50% overhead, only had to pay 50% taxes, probably someone in South Carolina or Tennessee, you know, your payroll cost, your wages at 30%, 1% owner draw, they're making, you're making pretty decent. They're making 29% profit versus here, they're losing money versus here where they're making 10%, you know, 
and again, like if this person has to pay more in taxes, if they were allocating taxes, like I suggested, they'd be making zero profit. And I think that is the main thing I need to point out to you guys is again, I understand these are very rough numbers. These are very simple numbers, but as you see very clearly, this is something where you can easily see that it's hard to make profit when you give them 50%. If I did this again from 50 to 30, at least it's $10, at least it is 20% profit, which you know the business has to make profit whether or not you're working in it. That is the point of a business. A business needs to make money. A business in, is in business to make money. If you are running a business, like this one right here, $50 groom, 15% overhead, 25% in taxes, 10% payroll costs, 50% in wages, no owner draw. That means 100% of it is allocated to just running the business. This is a hobby. Um, this right here, this example of a profit, this is someone's hobby. This is somebody who is doing something for fun. This reminds me a lot when I was breeding and showing labs and I basically broke even. This is a hobby. This is a business. See this guys where it's 30%, at least 1% to owner draw. This person's making 29% profit. That's a business. Here, again, 30% profit. Now I would like to see them have an owner draw, but even if they use this extra bit of profit to pay off debt um, in their business or start setting up an emergency fund, I wouldn't be mad about that. But there you go, that is a business. If you are making less than 20% net profit, and again, I'm assuming net profit if you don't have a lot of debt. If you have a lot of debt, like I said, I opened my grooming van and my grooming van had a lot of, you know, my grooming van, because it is a $100,000 purchase and grooming vans are generally between 75 and 100 grand plus, it's gonna be a lot of debt to take on for the business. So it is going to take a long time to pay off. So your business may not technically be profitable, but once you pay off that debt, you're going to be profitable. Or once you put away your savings, you're going to be profitable. So I really hope you guys appreciated this. Um, I know it's, you know, I and again, I am not talking from a employee standpoint. For those of you guys that are employees, I would love to talk more about that kind of stuff. But I think a lot of that comes down to when we're talking about employees, it's about what's fair and what's fair is not always what's popular. And that is gonna, you know, unfortunately get me a little bit of flack because like I understand as a, you know, as somebody who has worked in the pet industry a long time, I don't want to be screwed. You don't want to be screwed. No one wants to be screwed. But, you know, it's about figuring out what is fair. Um, but it doesn't matter what's fair if as a as an employee, if you're the business close. It, there's no point in getting 50, 50%, which by the way, 50% is not a pay roll. 50% is not like, it's not, how do I put this? I'm sorry, I'm trying to think of a good way to put it. 50% is not a pay scale. I can't go into you know, anywhere. So if I if I went into a job and said I want 50%, it's like, what does that even mean? What's 50%? 50% is a number that the grooming salon has made up in their head that they decided that they deserve and earn. And it's just not reasonable and it's really bad for your business. Um, you know, and with that 50%, as you've so as we looked before, is that person earning thirty thousand dollars a year, twenty thousand dollars a year, fifty thousand dollars a year, a hundred thousand dollars a year? How much is that person making, earning that money? That's what I really wish you guys would know because unfortunately, you know, just thinking 50% I need to pay my employees, what does that mean? Does that mean, like I said, does that 20, 30, 40, $50,000 a year? Because a lot of times someone could be making this amount of money per hour and be earning 50,000 or they may be earning 30% but earning, let's say, fifty or sixty thousand dollars a year. Um, I just want to share a little bit with you guys. I do have a co payroll cost estimation, um, and this is part of. I'm just trying to tr figure out trans. There we go. Trans. Woohoo! Technology. So, as you guys can see, this is a payroll cost estimator. Um, this is something I've been working on a little bit, and this is to tell how much I would pay an employee 
And it really does suck for some people that are slower or if you have lower price per pet, because like this is an example of somebody if they have an average price per dog, um, and again, I said, how many average number of grooms per day? This is somebody who's a slower groomer. I'm a slower groomer. I really can't do more than five dogs a day. Um, and how many hours are they grooming, spending grooming that day? How many hours of non-essential grooming tasks? And this would be very much me. I'm a neat freak. Um, I am, focus a lot of my time on cleaning. So, you know, when I have time to prep, I'm probably prepping at least 30 minutes before um, and at least an hour doing and then how many days do they work per week? Um, and then I would figure out how much income they brought in per day, how much they brought in per week, and then also how much they brought in per month. And this would, I personally would do two weeks of paid vacation. Again, if you have 30% percent percent is where you're at, you're with your payroll, you should be pay, giving your employees two weeks paid vacation. That is very fair. And again, you will have enough meat on the bone if you do this properly. So they're currently, so here they go. So what are they actually bringing into the salon? They're bringing in $62,000 a year, you know, and they're bringing in about um, $5,200 a month. If they're working 40 hours a week, you know, and the average hours is 167 a month, then that means that they're, the amount of money they make me per hour, the gross amount of money they make me per hour. So remember, before I take out all of my stuff, is $31.25 an hour. Now, if they're earning me $31.25 an hour, that's not a lot of money, guys. Like everyone talks about how groomers should be making $20, $25 an hour. Well, if you're only earning me $31 an hour, I can't pay you $20 an hour, $25 an hour. This groomer's gotta get her ass in gear. So either she's gotta up these grooms. So let's say instead of five, let's say she does 10. Whoop. Oh, don't freeze on me. Okay, so now this groomer's grooming 10 dogs a day at $50 a dog. You know, and she, let's say she's, you know, she's really fast. So she only needs an hour doing non-essential tasks. So she can groom 10, she's like Wonder Woman. She can groom 10 dogs in six hours and half hour before her shift, half hour after her shift. Works five days. So she's earned, so she brings into the shop $500 a day. Well, okay, so if she brings in $500 a day, I, I can't give her half. I can't give her $250. You know, you think that makes sense, but it doesn't. So she brings in about $71 an hour, you know, a little less than, a little less than $72 an hour. Again, I have to keep it under 30%. So 30% or lower. So she would be making, so this groomer here, yeah, she's making 21 bucks an hour. This groomer here is making me money and therefore I can do this. Now this groomer also gets two weeks of paid vacation. So this groomer gets to go to the Bahamas for two weeks and get her pay rate. That's very generous. And this allows this business to grow, to sustain itself, you know, and do what it has to do versus cutting corners and failing. So I know that it's not always, I know a lot of what I have to say is not always the most popular um, you know, it kind of sucks because I wish I had all the things I could tell you that would make everyone happy in sunshine and rainbows. But unfortunately, numbers don't care about our feelings and the numbers are there, you know, in this estimation with these groomers. And again, this is where we really need to start looking at our pricing per dog or cat and how we're going to do things. Um, I've been grooming over 10 years, probably closer to I don't want to age myself, but almost 15 years now, their pricing hasn't changed much. You know, we used to charge 25, 30 bucks for a lab and a lot of shops are still charging 25, 30 bucks for a lab. You know, the pricing has to come up. It has to come up. And if it does not come up, then you have to figure out where else you're going to do it. Because if you keep cutting out the money in your business, either you are running a hobby, you own your job, and you're subsidizing. That's another thing too, is a lot of times groomer owners are subsidizing their employees. So the money they're paying themselves 50% and that money that they're making when they're grooming is free money. I hate when people tell me like, oh, it's free money because the money, everybody else is free. It's like, no, no, no. Because if that groomer 
gets bit by a dog really bad, if they get bit by a dog really bad, that's your business. Like you're going to be in the news about the screamer got bit by a dog. What if they can no longer work? So they get bit by a dog. They're going to need surgeries. They're going to have all of these problems. And guess what? That's your business that you have to deal with all of that. And now you don't have someone to work. It's not gravy money. You need to have money to deal with things like, let's say an employee, God forbid, God forbid. Again, and I'm sure you guys saw that terrible accident where that table malfunctioned and crushed a dog. That is no one's fault. That is, I mean, it's, it's the manufacturer of the tables, but it's horrible. And if that was one of our shops, our shops may have closed because of that, because people are crazy nowadays. And so you would lose everything and your employees will just pick up and go work for somebody else. And I know it sounds really nasty, but it's not meant to be. Employees can pick their stuff up and go work somewhere else. You are putting in all of that effort, pain. I mean, if it doesn't work, that's your business. Um, Teresa's saying, I appreciate you bringing up these issues to mind and helping us to actually stop and look at how we are doing. I know a lot of times what we are doing in this industry, we are just doing because it's what we're told to do, but no one on other other industry has is telling people to do this. Um, we are good, kind hearted souls. And because of that, you know, I know when I've had employees, I've said these people, I have to keep food on their table. I'm here to help them. And it's absolutely true. What's not true is my business is not open to keep people employed. I have to keep my business open to keep them employed, you know, but I'm not keeping my business open in order to pay their bills, you know, in the sense that I didn't open a business to help other people like that. But if my business closes, they're going to have to go somewhere else. And, you know, it just makes things complicated. So, you know, I want to thank you guys so much for being here. Um, I do want to welcome you guys to consider joining my membership. My membership is called Grow Wealthy Grooming. We have one small fee per month. And right now we are working on foundational members. In this membership, we do work on things different each month in our business. It's one thing to tackle. That said, because it's a low monthly fee, you have access to these things forever. So you're able to go in each month and work on what you want to work on and not worry about whatever it is that you don't want to work on. For example, our first month will be February and we will be working on organizing our business, thinking about, again, the things that we haven't thought about in a while and organizing them. And again, right now, I don't even want to say how much the low introductory price is for a foundational member. I would just go to the website because the price is so low for the first 100 customers. After that, it's going to be doubling and then eventually tripling. So I would really suggest if you're interested in becoming a foundational member, I want to welcome you. And I would really do it because the truth is it's going to go so quick. And I'm really, really, really excited about all of this because I am. I, I'm really passionate about what I do. And I love teaching you guys things. And I'm happy to have you guys here if you're not ready. Um, if you guys are not ready to join me in my membership or my online course or as a business client, I really enjoy being here with you guys each week on this show, Grow Wealthy Grooming. All right, guys, so I'm going to head out. I'm actually going to hop in to do a live in my private Facebook group for those that are in my personal finance on a leash personal group, which is teaching pet groomers personal finance, which is a blast. I know you guys are like, that's a blast. We have fun. We have fun. Um, but I'm really excited because I love um, personal finance and leashes. Basically, I teach pet groomers how to get their money under control because, again, things that we're not thinking about in our business, we are certainly not thinking about with our personal money. And generally, if our business is not under control, it's most of the time it's because we are not paying attention to our personal finance, which is pretty easy because we work really, really hard. I mean... You know, I mean, as someone who's been cat grooming for a couple of years now, I will say, and I know dog grooming, you know, every time I see one of my groomer friends post like a newfie pic, I'm like, oh, I don't miss dog grooming. But I do, I also have a standard poodle and I don't even groom my own dog anymore. Wah, wah, wah. Hashtag real life, right? Anyway, guys, I've had a great night. I can't wait to see you next week. Happy grooming. Oopsie, I gotta technical difficulties. I'm going to get like the outro up.
Yeah. Do try this. Bye, guys.